Okay, so back to looking at switching. So a switch is connected by some set of links. Again, if you think about you know, your standard kind of rack mount switch, you've got a bunch of these twisted pair ports in the front uh, for Ethernet. And on each of those ports, it's separately running uh, the relevant data link protocol. In this case, it would be you know fast Ethernet or gigabit Ethernet typically. Um, and really, th the job of the switch is to receive uh, frames coming in on any of those ports and work out where they need to get transmitted to and then transmit them on there. So often that will be coming in one port and out another port. Uh, and so this is called switching and forwarding. So switching is deciding which way it needs to go. So this is by analogy to a uh, rail network. So in the United States, uh, what uh, the where you have a train line that uh, forks off, um, you have a switch uh, that changes between that. Here in Australia and the UK, uh, we call them points, uh, but it's still uh, the same idea. And then forwarding is the actual act of moving it. So there's two steps here. One is deciding where it needs to go. Uh, so this is the switching part um, or setting the points, if you like. Uh, or if you're uh, into agriculture, you might be uh, you know, drafting uh, livestock. And so you're actually moving the, uh, the drafting gate to choose which way they go. And then the second step is the actual movement uh, of the frame uh, or of the thing. So that would then be the train moving over the, um, the switch or points. Um, or the animal moving through the uh, the drafting gates, uh, and for the switch, it's the uh, the frame actually being copied out onto that link where it should go. And so, according to the OSI model, this is the main job uh, for the network layer. And where is my mouse gone? Right. So the question then is, how does the switch decide which port it needs to output uh, each packet, or rather each frame onto? Because we're working on uh, layer two. Um, so it will typically look at the uh, the header of the, well, almost always it will look at the header of the packet. It'll be quite weird to look at something else uh, unless you're doing deep packet inspection for firewalls, uh, but that's a whole separate topic. Uh, and it will look for some kind of identifier uh, in there to make a, a decision based on that. So two very common approaches are a datagram or connectionless approach. So this will use the destination address uh, field from, for example, the ethernet uh, frame. Um, or you can have a virtual circuit or connection oriented approach where you might have some kind of tag uh, on a whole flow uh, of traffic regardless of who it's to or from. Uh, and a third approach, which is much less common, is source routing, um, where the, uh, the, the source of the, uh, the packet may actually be the thing that's used for the, uh, the decision making process. So this process makes several assumptions then. Uh, the first actually is that uh, each host, each device on the network has to have a globally unique address so that we can actually uh, switch uh, towards it. Um, we have to have some way to identify uh, which are the input and output uh, ports on the switches. Uh, and that could be done in a variety of ways. So that could be a name based kind of approach or it could be a numbered uh, based approach. Uh, it really doesn't matter. You just have to have some way to know where the, the frames uh, can be coming into the switch and where they can go out again. And so, of course, each port, we think about an Ethernet switch, has an input channel and an output channel because it's a bi-directional link. Uh, but not all links are bi-directional uh, necessarily. Um, so if we look at the, the datagram uh, forwarding, the, the concept here really is that each datagram, because it has a source and a destination address, it should actually have enough information to decide uh, for every switch along the way, uh, where it should go next uh, to get to that destination. So every packet contains complete destination information and, uh, and that's used. So uh, if, for example, we have a bunch of switches in the network uh, and it's trying to decide how to forward uh, a packet or a frame, um, each switch has to have a forwarding table to know where each of these hosts are connected to which switch and whether uh, you know, uh, where it needs to go to. And so this can be called a routing table uh, in this context. So let's say host B, uh, or rather um, switch uh, three here, has host G on port one. It has, uh, pardon me, uh, the link to switch two on port zero. It has a link to port B on switch three, and it has a link to port H on port two. Uh, so if, uh, host B sends a, a, a frame to host G. It's come in on link three and the switch goes, ah, I know where host G is. Host G is on link one. It can send it straight out to link one. Uh, if it wanted to send something to host C, 
it would say, oh, I have to send it out to link zero because that's where it is logically uh, to switch in terms of the location of switch three. Um, it's in the direction of switch uh, two. And so this kind of table will get uh, built up. Uh, so again, if we're looking here at switch two in this example, we can see which port numbers it needs to go on to get to different things. So uh, this uh, port one has only one host. So there's only one entry, which is for host F. Whereas uh, port zero has another whole switch with several hosts. So in fact, there's one, two, three hosts. So there's one, two, three entries corresponding to exactly those hosts in the entry. And likewise uh, for switch one. So we want to think about what the uh, the properties then of a connectionless datagram network are. Um, a host can send a packet to any other uh, host on the network at any time uh, because the switch, every switch in the network knows how to reach uh, you know, every host on the network. Uh, so when a host sends a packet though, it doesn't know whether the network knows the way to deliver that to its destination. Um, another key piece is that each uh, packet, each datagram is considered completely independent of every other datagram. So even if you have repeated packets coming in with the same destination address, the switch kind of has to look up and work out how it's going to, um, uh, to deliver that, uh, that packet repeatedly. Um, a really important property here is that if a switch or a link fails, um, it may or may not have an effect on the routability of traffic, the ability to deliver uh, packets and frames to their destination, so long as there is a backup link and some kind of redundant link in the, uh, the network, and the switches can update their forwarding table um, to take advantage of that. Uh, and we'll talk about virtual circuit switching in the next video.